is it? It's a case for Nick Carter, master detective. Yes, it's a case for the most famous of all manhunters, the detective whose ability at solving crime is unequaled in the history of detective fiction. Nick Carter, master detective. <laughs> Continuing the curious adventure called Kidnapped for Sale or Nick Carter and the Mystery of the Missing Babies. Putting together several clues he had uncovered, Nick Carter learned that Mrs. Anders' baby, stolen by the baby ring that has been acquiring babies in any way it can and selling them to couples eager to adopt them, had been sold to a Mr. and Mrs. Smith living on Main Street in Midvale. Hurrying to Midvale with Scubby, Nick got there just too late. A man with a foreign accent had gotten the baby back from the Smiths and disappeared with it again. Nick, uncertain of his next move, gets a phone call from Randolph Phelps, the head of the board of the Infants Hospital, who says he is eager to help stamp out the gang. Phelps says that the man with the accent has made an appointment to call on him in about an hour. So Nick and Scubby start immediately for the Phelps estate. Gosh, Nick, that phone call from Phelps was a break, wasn't it? Yes, Scubby. It looks as if things are coming our way at last. Well, it's sure about time. So far, the gang has been one jump ahead of us all the way. And we're catching up with them, though. I'm only worried about one thing, Scubby. Oh, you mean the baby? Yes, Scubby. I've got to get that baby back safe and sound. After promising Mrs. Anders to stop hunting for it, I can't let anything happen to it. Yeah, you're right, Nick. I was staking everything on finding the baby with Mr. and Mrs. Smith, but since the gang's one jump ahead of us... We've got to catch up with him, and quickly. Oh, Nick. Yes, what is it? If that man who took the baby is on his way now to talk to Phelps, maybe he'll have the baby with him. He only got it from the Smiths an hour ago. No, Scubby, I'm afraid not. He's probably left it in some safe hiding place. But if my hunch is right, it won't be too far away. Gosh, I hope you're right. Hey, why do you suppose he wants to talk to Phelps? Well, as a member of the board of directors of the Infants Hospital, Phelps is in a position to obtain a lot of information that would be helpful to the gang. Oh, sure, Nick. If they could get Phelps to help them, they'd be sitting pretty. Yes, Phelps would be a big asset to that gang, Scubby. Oh, uh, that crossroad just ahead will save us a mile in getting to Riverton. You better turn there. Okay, Nick. I sure hope we can reach Phelps' place before the man with the accent does. Nick, that must be the Phelps place up there ahead of us on the hill. Oh, yes, yes. He said it was the first estate on River Road after we turned off the highway, so that's the place, all right. And that must be the drive leading up to the house. Oh, uh, shall I turn in? Yes, but take it slowly, Scubby. Take it slowly. Yeah. And turn off the headlights. Right. Gosh, it's dark with the lights off. Well, there's light enough if you take it easy. Follow the drive all the way around behind the house to the garage. If our man hasn't come yet. We don't want him to see our car when he does get here. Ah, that must be the Phelps car outside the garage. Pull up beside it. Right, Nick. Well, there's no other car here yet. So I guess we did get here before the guy with the accent. I hope so. I want to talk to Phelps first, if possible. Let's see now. Phelps said to come to the back door. Yeah? Oh, let's see where... Oh, yes, that is there. Just come on. Hey, we really are out in the country. Listen to those crickets. There they are. And the doorbell. Scubby, let me have your gun. My gun? Yes. You brought one along, didn't you? Oh, sure. Wait a minute. Here it is. Thanks. But, Nick, don't you have it? A... Here comes someone. Yes? Who is it? Nick Carter. Mr. Phelps is expecting me. This is my assistant. Oh, of course. Come in, please. Mr. Phelps is in the study. Right this way, please. Thank you. Mr. Carter and his assistant are here, Mr. Phelps. Good. Come in, Mr. Carter. I'm certainly glad to see you. And I'm glad we could get here in time. This is my assistant, Scubby Wilson. How do you do, Mr. Wilson? How do you do? Please sit down, both of you, and... Oh, Harry. Yes, Mr. Phelps? Wait in the front hall until the caller we're expecting gets here. Warn me on the communicator before you show him in, though. Certainly, Mr. Phelps. Now, Mr. Carter, I want your advice... Should we try to capture this man the minute he gets here, or should we hear what he has to say first? I'd like to hear what he has to say, and the more he talks about himself and his gang, the better I'll like it. That's my idea, exactly. But, Nick, suppose he brings some of his gunmen with him. We have to take that chance, Gibby. But I have a hunch he's traveling practically alone tonight. 
When he got Mrs. Anders' baby from the Smiths, we know he didn't have more than one man with him. You say he got Mrs. Anders' baby? Yes, you Mr. Mean... Phelps. Hmm. We almost got it back, but he beat us to it again. I'm very sorry to hear that. You have some clue as to where it's gone, I hope? No, not a sign of it. Well, one. that is nothing very tangible. But we have enough to keep us going. I see. However, I understand you have had some success in rounding up some of the less important members of the ring. I suppose with what you've learned from them, you have a pretty good line on the rest of the gang. Oh, we don't really oh, yes, have... yes, 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 indeed, Mr. Phelps. Riley's working on that now. Although he hasn't completely analyzed all the information yet. Oh, I see. Well, I hope we can stamp out the entire gang soon. I agreed to talk to this fellow with the accent in the hope that we could learn something from him. I'm very glad you did. And I'm glad you got in touch with me. I hope to find out a great deal tonight. But, Nick, how are we going to get him to talk? If he sees us, he's probably... We'll have probably... to hide someplace where we can overhear you, Mr. Phelps. Um, let's see. What about that alcove there where the windows are? Oh, yes, yes, of course. Uh, that should be just the thing. Oh, I see. And when the time comes, we can jump out and take him by surprise. Mm -hmm. And I think it'll work. Get as much out of him as you can, Mr. Phelps. Trust me for that. Now, there's uh, just one other thing. Yes, what? The butler and the maids are out tonight. Besides yourselves, there's just me and my secretary here now. Do you think we ought to send for any help? You mean the cops? I was thinking of the state police, just to be on the safe side. All right, can't do any harm. It'll just take a second. Hello, operator. 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 Operator, give me the state police barracks on Meridian Road. Yes, that's right. Uh, we can be uh, sure now that he won't get away. Yes. Uh, hello? Uh, State police? Uh, this is Mr. Randolph Phelps speaking. Can you send two of your men over at once? Yes, yes, it's urgent. You know where I live, don't you, on River Road? Good. I'll expect them inside of 20 minutes. Thank you. Ah, there. Now I think we're prepared. Our visitor should be here at any minute. You're armed, of course. Yes, I have a gun. You engage him in conversation. When I think the right time has come, I'll step out and cover him. He won't get away. Excellent, Mr. Carter. Now, uh... He's here. Yes? Hello? Your caller is here, Mr. Phelps. Thank you. Show him in. Yes, sir. You'd better get set. Yes, come on, Skippy. Let's get behind those drapes. Sure, Nick. The gentleman to see you, Mr. Phelps. Thank you, Harry. See that we aren't disturbed. Yes, sir. Well, Mr. Phelps, this is a pleasure. It's quite a few years since we met last. We never have met, to my knowledge. And I like to know a man's name when I'm speaking to him. Oh, too bad, Mr. Phelps. I like to keep my name a secret. But uh, let's sit down, shall we? I think I have something to say that you'll be most interested in. That's what you said on the phone. I cannot imagine what you can have to say that will interest me. Nick, we might that's well the guy on. who's got the baby, all right. Oh, sir, yes, he and he's still wearing the whipcord slacks Mrs. Smith mentioned. Nick, I've got a funny idea. I've seen him before, but I don't know where. Maybe I saw a picture of him in the paper sometime. Yes, Gubby, you probably did. Oh, I place him now. Fifteen years ago, he drove a truck for a rum-running gang. He used the name of Danny the Frenchman. But, Nick, what are we going to... Quiet, Scubby. I want to hear this. Down to business and say what you have to say. My time is limited. All right, Mr. Phelps. Here it is. You're on the board of the Infants Hospital. You have connections with other nursing homes. What of it? Well, just this. We want you to give us the names of people coming to the hospital to adopt babies. Also, the names of all mothers of the hospital records who are in financial difficulties. That's perfectly preposterous. Oh, is it? Not for fifty thousand dollars a year, it is. Fifty thousand dollars. Whatever made you think I'd Christ agree to Kelly. such a proposition? Because, Mr. Phelps, that's quite a bit of money, and think how easy it is to earn it. And in a way, you will be a public benefactor. Think of all these well-fixed people who desire to adopt fine little babies, who will be just making things easier for them, and you will be well paid for it. Nobody will be hurt. Everybody will benefit. Hear that, Nick? Mm -hmm. yes, well, maybe, yes, yes. and maybe not. But I certainly wouldn't dream of associating with you unless I knew more about you. How does your organization work? Oh, very simply, Mr. Ferris. We have men constantly on the lookout for mothers who wish to part with their babies. And also for couples who want babies to adopt. We, uh, shall I say, we act as middlemen. For a fee, of course. A large fee. Oh, that doesn't yeah. tell me much, I'm afraid. You will learn more later when you have joined us, sir. You see, with your context, Mr. Phelps, we will be able to dispense with many of these other men. And the profits will be that much greater. But uh, what about the risk? Suppose Nick Carter and the police catch up with you. Then what? <laughs> Nick Carter. Ah, oh, yes, yes. 
He's been uh, a little bothersome of late. And how? I have lost three of my best men because of him. One of them, my chief lieutenant. To me, it seems very important. Uh, very soon now, I shall take care of Nick Carter. Mm. And uh, the police are much too stupid to be of danger. Suppose I turn down your offer. Well, that would be very unwise, Mr. Phelps. Very unwise. Yes. Yes, I see what you mean. But, but you've got to give me a little time to think. Oh, as long as you wish, Mr. Phelps. Up to two minutes. Phelps is sure doing a good job of acting, Nick. Yes, Scaly, a very good job of acting. Well, I'll say so. Hey, Nick, I think I heard a car stop outside the house then. Yes, so did I. Must be the state troopers that Phelps sent for. Probably. Well, Scaly, I think the time has come for action. Up with your hands, Danny. I've got you covered. What the... Don't di- reach for that gun or I'll let you have it. Good work, Carter. Nick Carter. Yes, Danny. Nick Carter. Now stand up. That's right. And keep your hands up. Say, what is this? Get his gun, Scubby. Okay. I'll get it. Never mind, Mr. Phelps. Scubby will take it. Yeah. Okay, I got it, Nick. Now what? Give me the gun. Yeah, sure. Now, we'll tie him up first, and then he's going to do a little more talking. You will regret this, Phelps. Mr. Phelps, you put in a call for some state troopers? Yes, I did. Come in. Come in, lefty. Hey, those are two of the toughest-looking state troopers I ever saw. Hey, one of them's got a Tommy gun. Yes, Gil. All right, Carter. You and your chum put up your hands or I'll cut you both in half with this gun I got here. But, hey, you don't want us. You want him. That's what you think. Put up your hands quick. You too, Phelps. But, but I don't understand. Never mind what you understand. Put up your hands. That's right. Now, if one of you moves, you're a dead duck. This is ridiculous. Mr. Carter, hey, can't you... Hey, you're, you're making a mistake. I don't think so, Skeppy. I've been afraid of something like this happening. He seems to mean what he says. You bet we do. Get the guns, Danny. Of course. I'll take my gun back again, if you please, Mr. Carter. And yours. Ah, thank you. That is all. And uh, yours, Wilson? I don't have one. No? Well, let me see, huh? No. No, you're right. Uh, Mr. Phelps doesn't carry one, I'm sure. You... You'll suffer for this. Oh, yes. Someone will suffer. But not me. Well, Mr. Carter, you are not talking much for a man who is about to die. That doesn't seem to be much to say. I'm glad you appreciate that. Words are no good to you now, you know. You escaped from my men, but I'm not as stupid as they were. This time there's going to be no slip-up. You're going to die, Nick Carter. But it's going to be done so cleverly that nobody is even going to guess you were murdered. So the plan that Nick and Scubby and Phelps made backfired on them. They laid a trap for Danny, the man with the accent, but he outsmarted them and it was they themselves who were caught in it. Danny has planned cleverly so far, but can he carry his plan through to its intended finish and eliminate Nick Carter forever? Listen tomorrow. The Strange Adventures of Nick Carter, Master Detective, features Lon Clark as Nick Carter... Patsy is played by Helen Choate. The stories are written by Bob Arthur and David Cogan, and original music is played by Lou White. The entire production is under the direction of Jock McGregor. Tomorrow night at the same time, listen to the further adventures of Nick Carter in the case entitled... Kidnapped. For sale. Or Nick Carter and the Mystery of the Missing Babies. The Adventures of Nick's Adopted Son, Chick Carter, Boy Detective, are broadcast over most of these stations Monday through Fridays at 5 30 p.m. Eastern War Time. Nick's own show, The Return of Nick Carter, a copyrighted feature of Street and Smith Publications, Incorporated is presented by the Mutual Broadcasting Company and is broadcast from our New York studios over most of these stations every evening, Monday through Friday, at quarter past nine, Eastern War Time. This is Mutual. Mutual.